We'll be talking about all the hot allegations against Nicola and what's happening next. Stay tuned till the end so you don't miss out on just how crazy this story gets. Background. A relentless Tesla rally pressured General Motors and other legacy automakers to catch up. The underlying narrative for the electric vehicle market in 2020 has undoubtedly been Tesla's relentless rally, which has culminated in the company being valued with a market cap of over $400 billion at its peak, more than time-tested names like GM, Ford, Daimler, and Fiat combined. Unlike Nikola, Tesla develops extensive proprietary technology, which cuts many traditional automakers and suppliers out of the picture. The astronomical rise in Tesla's valuation has pressured other auto companies like General Motors to unlock similar value from the ongoing EV wave. In August 2020, analysis from Douche Bank and Morgan Stanley pressured General Motors to spin off its electric vehicle business, stating that such a move dedicated to EV would be worth up to $100 billion. Nothing is off the table, GM CEO Mary Barra said at the time, appeasing analysis and winning a price-targeted boost from Morgan Stanley shortly thereafter. Then what happened to Nikola? Following the September 12th Hindenburg research report, the company has been wallowing in complications. As a short seller, the investor bets a stock will go down, Hindenburg has an incentive to bring out the worst aspects of the company. There are many. Most egregious, Nikola admitted to have staged a demo and shot a video. Nikola One in motion, after Nikola One tractor, the cab and the propulsion system of an 18-wheeler rolling down a hill seemingly under its own power. Actually, it was just rolling down a hill, which trucks are meant to do when you take your foot off the brakes. Nikola's alternative facts explanation? Nikola never stated its truck was driving under its own propulsion in the video. The fact that Nikola was sourcing key technology from third-party suppliers, which Nikola had claimed to be in-house inventions, was a major concern for the company. Power inverters that Nikola said it developed came from a company called Cascadia. The Nikola Trade Tractor was also non-working, and it was a Nikola 1 with a H2 and zero-emission hydrogen electric symbols painted on the cab, the Hindenburg report says. This resulted in the board of directors announcing leadership transitions. Stefan Gursky, a former vice chairman of GM and Nikola board member, was appointed chairman of the Nikola board. What of Trevor Milton? It took just a few weeks for Trevor Milton to drop from being one of the youngest newcomers on Forbes 400 billionaires list to a sudden resignation from Nikola Corporation, the electric and hydrogen truck startup he started, amid allegations that the company is an intricate fraud. The move resulted from a financial research firm taking a short position in Nikola. Hindenburg Research issued a detailed and scathing report that alleged Milton committed a number of fraudulent acts to help the company achieve its $20 billion valuation. Milton and Nikola refuted most of the firm's allegations, leaving a few that they seemed to take responsibility for. In one statement, the company did admit it rolled a non-running truck down a hill for a misleading in-motion video ad released in 2018. The US Department of Justice and Securities and Exchange Commission have both since opened investigations into the company. Nikola is truly in my blood, and always will be. And the focus should be on the company and its world-changing mission, not me, Milton said in a statement. So I made the difficult decision to approach the board and volunteer to a step aside as executive chairman. Founding Nikola and growing it into a company that will change transportation for the better and help protect our world's climate has been an incredible honor. The move proved to be a catalyst for several misfortunes for Milton and Nikola, who just recently were respectively seen by many as the next Elon Musk and as a startup poised to jumpstart the necessant EV truck market. Milton founded the company in 2015 with the goal of making hydrogen and electric-powered semi-trucks for long-distance hauling. It also unveiled the Badger, a passenger pickup truck it said could get 600 miles on range on an FCEV slash BEV battery blend and do 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds. For a brief moment this summer, Nikola emerged as the poster child of the new generation of EV startups, scoring huge Wall Street valuations on the heels of Tesla's stock price skyrocketing past every other car company. It went public with an SPAC, an old Wall Street tool that's big again in the electric car world, gaining a valuation of $34 billion early on. Things really picked up from there when Nikola announced a strategic partnership and investment from General Motors earlier this month. However, it didn't take long for things to fall apart. While Hindenburg Research openly admitted a short-selling position in Nikola, it alleged that most of the company's so-called proprietary vehicle technology was not its own, that prototypes used in promotional materials were not actually functional, that the company exaggerated the number of reservations it currently holds, and that Milton's brother was placed in charge of building out the company's hydrogen infrastructure, despite his most recent job being a contractor in Hawaii. Moreover, while Milton and his team have refuted Hindenburg's claims, they did not dispute all of them, and in the process, they raised more questions than they actually put to rest. GM has confirmed that their deal with Nikola is still on, insisting that it did all proper due diligence on the deal before it happened. Though, as the Detroit Free Press said, and others point out, 
The current situation is more of a PR black eye for GM than an outright financial risk, given the size of the investment. Nikola has no other choice but to deliver on that deal and prove that it has a viable future, all without the guidance and leadership of the man who founded it all. If nothing else, the situation is further proof that the EV startup world is often built on shakier ground than Wall Street investors with dreams of easy Tesla-level money would like to admit. Making cars is hard. Reconfirming plans. Nikola reaffirmed its plans to build the semi-truck in an announcement on Wednesday. It intends to test its battery electric Nikola Tray semi-trucks in Europe by the end of this year, followed by production in the fourth quarter of the next year. The company also said construction of its plant in Arizona remains on track for it to begin manufacturing activity in 2022, followed by additional work on the facility in 2023. It aspires to form a partnership with another company in hydrogen fuel cell stations by the end of the year, and to break ground on the first hydrogen fuel stations in the second quarter of 2021. It also plans to start testing its fuel cell semi-truck in 2022, with production beginning in 2023. Contrary to its previous strategy of making its important announcements over Twitter, the company is now holding coordinated press releases and executive interviews. It's something investors should continue to expect going forward, according to the executives. Exit strategy? Following the Hindenburg report, which revealed the false claims that Nikola Motors stated, JP Morgan Chase somehow reiterated its buying rating. From this, it was crystal clear that Chase was also part of the deception. JP Morgan Chase owned Nikola stock and still owns it today. As a result, it would be in their best interest to issue a buy rating on Nikola stock in order for them to profit. Furthermore, the responses of GM were similarly one-sided. GM CEO Mary Barra claimed that she did her own due diligence and is now requesting more stake in Nikola. GM's stake in Nikola quickly fell from $2 billion to $1.1 billion. So of course, the only logical decision from a greedy CEO's perspective is to obtain more free money. The fact that these major corporations are supporting an automaker that has already been proven to be a fraud truly shows the ethics of the underlying executives. Millions, if not billions of dollars worth of stake is still in the possession of the remaining Nikola executives. Funnily enough, these executives are actually receiving more stock as a quote-unquote award for keeping the valuation of Nikola Motors at a certain level. Mark Russell, the current CEO, received 600,000 shares worth $14.4 million as an award. In total, Mark has over 41 million shares of Nikola that is worth roughly $1 billion. Yes, you heard that right, $1 billion. Kim Brady, the CFO of Nikola, has $7.6 million worth of stocks as of this moment, and Brittain Worthen, the CLO, has $7.2 million of stocks. Yet this stock is worthless to them right now because they can't sell their shares until December 21st, which is when the lockup on the shares expire. December 21st is a significant date since it's expected that all these shares will flood the market, resulting in a drop in Nikola valuation. All of these nuclear executives are large shareholders and they're desperately waiting for December 21st to roll around so they can dump their shares on the open market and run away with the hundreds of millions of dollars. Nikola's other strategy is to stay away from the media. After all, from a retail or instructional investor's perspective, if Nikola isn't on the media, this means that they are focused on delivering. But in all honesty, this is clearly false. Nikola executives are waiting on the hundreds of millions of shares. Over the past few days, Nikola attempted to silence online critics such as Sam Alexander and Tom Nash. Both of these YouTubers have received copyright strikes for using footage of the Nikola One in motion, despite the clip being fairly used. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these videos on your screen. See you there!